Smithy Irani ma'am, for Bostonians and Auxilians, you are special. We look forward to listening to you. Thank you, ma'am. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a proud privilege for me to be amongst you this evening while we celebrate the life, the work of Don Bosco. They say history has a habit of repeating itself, and a portion of history repeated itself when I came for this celebration this evening. I very happily marched on to the front gate of the Don Bosco School, only to be stopped and told, side the gate chair. <laughs> and when I came through, and I looked upon the father, I said, sir, as an auxiliary, over a decade and a half or two decades ago when I came to this very school with my sisters, we were told, side ke gate se ao, where I guess it doesn't make a difference to the chokidar even today, he would rather have an auxiliary come from the side gate. <laughs> but what is extremely mesmerizing is this, and with all due respect to father, all due respect to Rep. Major, I must add, that my principal was extremely nervous. She greeted me with flowers, and I'm sure all the students here today assembled will definitely agree with me when I say that it's the greatest privilege of our own life and those who have led us on our path, on our journey, to a fulfilled life one day in an opportunity like this, in a celebration like this, extend their blessings to class. So I requested my principal to sit next to me and I said, Sister, why so jittery? She said, well, everybody made fun of me and said, where is your student? I don't see the auxiliary here. I said, well, Sister, you can take heart in the fact that the auxiliary got here before the boy from Don Bosco. <laughs> that I was presented a book today about empowering education in today's India by Mr. Maria Charles. And when I was presented the book, I asked him, isn't the title a bit confusing? He repeated the title. He said, no, it is empowering education in today's India. I said, well, I would rather that we say empowering India through today's education. I'm extremely glad that when I glanced upon this book, which was presented to me, I see on page 149, 148, guidelines for promoting the wisdom of knowing. And one of the guidelines is to engage the very soul of the young, without violating individual privacy, encouraging the, run, the young to reach deep into themselves, so as to draw upon the resources at the core of their being leads to wisdom, says this book. And I thought to myself of this episode that I'd heard from a lady who met me with her young child. She met me disappointed because she said, why is it that our education system wants to have a compartmentalized view of the world? Why don't we give enough space for our young to fructify, to have their imaginations run wild and yet conform to Maryada? I asked her, ma'am, why are you so anguished? She said, when my child's maths teacher was teaching him basic numerical concepts, the teacher said, one plus one is two. My child said, no, there are times where one plus one is three. The teacher said, you're absolutely wrong. You somehow don't seem to understand the concept I'm teaching you. This child was admonished by the teacher. When the child went home, he related the incident to the parent. And the parent said, well, you are also right and so is the teacher. The parent went back to the school and engaged with the teacher and said, when you say one plus one is two, that is a numerical concept. When the child says one plus one can also be three, that is a family concept. The teacher said, how so? Oh, no, no pun intended. They called the child and asked the child to explain why the child felt 1 plus 1 is 3. The child said that every time I get hungry, 
and I see that my mother has only last two rotis to feed me. At times, she takes the extra atta and miraculously makes a third roti for me to eat. That is something every child can relate to when it comes to their mother's love, their mother's support and the way a mother engages their child. So the child said, that is why I thought that if this miracle is possible in my mother's kitchen, why isn't it possible on the blackboard of my teacher? And that is why I am extremely happy that this book reflects those concepts. Education is not only confined to books. Education is to bring about the ability to embrace the wisdom that our elders, our families have to give us. Education is about the ability to embrace humanity so that we, we respect, we relate to every other individual irrespective of their caste, creed or religion. Education is the ability to teach a child the art of forgiveness. So today, while we all come together and celebrate the life and works of Don Bosco, I think our biggest contribution to his way of life is if we ingrain in ourselves the ability to embrace humanity as it is, when we encourage ourselves to be humble in the presence not only of greatness, but also in the presence of those who might not agree with our views, but also, I think, our de greatest dedication to the life and work of Don Bosco would be when we also ingrain in self the ability to forgive and forgive from the depth of our heart. Once again, my best wishes, regards and salutations to this nation family. Yes, I did come from one amongst your own institution, but I hope that the next time when I return to Don Bosco Alaknanda, I am given passage from the front gate. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Subhrat.